hello and welcome to uh, another episode of the Funky Marketing Show. Totsi, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Hello, people. How are you today? Let me put on my glasses so I can look smarter. Intellect plus 10 points. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so another uh, another Funky Marketing episode, another time to for us to rant and talk about different things. Uh I just wanted to clear something up. Like this is called funky marketing show because we don't have like a, a certain script or anything that we want to go into. We just come up with a topic and we start in ranting about it. 100% Basically. natural. Yeah. So uh, this month, the topic that we're going to talk or rant about it, uh, or we might even have some guests. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Aravind, thank you. I do look smarter. True story. Uh, actually, true story. actually, I cannot see without them. But <laughs> yeah, so uh, my my vision is even better. Uh, but we we are gonna talk uh, this June about content strategy, uh, and it's all related to the way we uh, we approach content marketing. So uh, we are coming up with a with a huge. Uh, ebook. Totsi, what is the name? What is the topic of the ebook? Uh, well, we will be focused on uh, pillar pages and topic clusters and how to unlock your maximum growth potential. It's it's, it's like working working title. So we are still considering few different options, but it will be around creating pillar pages, topic clusters, and how to unlock maximum growth and revenue potential. Yeah, uh, alongside uh, ebook, we're launching five articles, all of them explaining different points uh, related to the content strategy. Uh, and we are uh, elaborating all those steps, all those things uh, here on the Funky Marketing Show. So um, let's let's dive into it. Uh, my idea of, of, uh, of the first topic is how do we decide, uh, you know, that uh, about the content strategy? You know, what should be the strategy, and uh, what should the strategy be focused on? A lot of, a lot of people like us from marketers, a lot of marketeers, you know, just put different tactics into into a strategy, and they call it strategy, and that's okay because we've been working in marketing for like ten years. We know what are some things that's gonna work, what are some things that that aren't going to work, but let's go from the scratch and see, you know, what's happening when, uh, you know, when we start working with a, with a company, for example, and we go, you know, step by step of how we can, we can come up with, uh, with the things that can give us insights to create the content strategy. So even before we are, uh, you know, creating, creating the strategy. So basically the first thing is to know who we are, you know, so to know, what the company is all about. Do we have a clear vision? Do we have a clear mission? So that is like the first the first step ever. And a lot of companies don't have that figured out. Uh, or they have something that they just wrote, you know, when they started, which is not even true now, or uh, a lot of companies, uh, you know, have a vision that will uh, go be outdated in a year. It's not, you know, further in the in the future, uh, and don't have the mission, which is actually, you know, practical way to get to the vision. So, you know, those kind of things um, are the first step from which we are starting, and then we go further. Totsi, what what do you think? What are some specific points that uh, that you know companies need to uh, pay attention when they're creating, you know, the vision, the mission, those kind of things. Actually, uh, I'm very happy at this moment because you wanted to go even few steps back yet because now we are dem demystifying like phase zero of creating content strategy. I was expected, hey, we will talk more around topic clusters, uh, con like concrete steps in creating pillar pages, stuff like that. And I'm really happy you decided to open the conversation like this because there is no more there is no material uh, 
on the internet or in some private discussion around this topic because it's like really really phase zero before you actually create strategy and as you as you noticed right people are usually uh, confusing and uh, mixing things a little bit because they will choose a few different short-term tactics and they will actually think it's a strategy because uh, i have like uh, Many, many times uh, people will consult me for my opinion about their strategy and I will usually tell them, well, if you are doing just this, are you sure actually you have strategy in place? So probably the best starting point is try to be in shoes of your customers. Try to be them at least for a second. Try to consider their pain points. Try to consider their then how we can actually approach them in further steps i think it's a uh, it's like essential for for creating further steps and i don't know uh, other things uh, they should be included in the right strategy yeah uh, i mean you know having a vision and a mission basically it uh, it allows you to have like strategic narrative to what your company does to what they're uh, you are trying to do you know changing the old way coming up with a new way what is the old way what is the new way so when you break it down like this you know exactly what you want to achieve you know you know exactly where you want to lead uh, to lead your customers uh, or your clients where do you want them to go and when you have those things, then basically you have the KPIs. You have the KPIs that you want to uh, that you want to achieve, and you know you make sure that you are doing them realistic. You know, a lot of people go into you know smart uh, SWOT analysis. You know all those things. I don't know. Some are against them, some are for them. But if you have never done any analysis, you should definitely do it. Uh, some people don't do it because they are aware of where their gaps are, when their strengths are, you know, where the opportunities uh, lay down. So uh, in that way, maybe you don't need to do it if you know those things. Uh, but then we are coming to the to the point where we we need to define, you know, who we are as a company, or how are we different than the others. So we know the vision, we know the mission, we know the KPIs. So let's see what are we offering that is different than the others. Who are our competitors? Who we consider as competitors? You know, it, it uh, even that segment is uh, you know it's a topic in itself. But uh, you know what's here important is to figure out. You know, uh, it's not only online. Uh, or just offline, it's not only our industry, uh, it's all different, different things. So it's important to, to have that figure out. Let's say we are a SaaS tool, then we are looking to, you know, to work with, uh, with the customers in finance industry. But actually, if, uh, you know, they have uh, enough vendors already, not only necessarily solving the problem that we are solving, they maybe don't have enough enough money to get another tool. As simple as that. So they are also your competitors. You need to figure out about those things. And uh, there are many, many layers, layers of it. But when you go and look at the things, uh, you need to see, you know, how you differentiate yourselves from the others. I mean, we talked about creative way of differentiating last night, uh, less uh, last week on the previous episode uh, but when it comes to uh, unique selling uh, proposition you need to see exactly what you are offering and how are you different than the others I mean just even if you know if you have the lower pricing that's the way to differentiate yourself maybe it's not the best way <laughs> definitely short it's not term, the best short way. Term. Yeah, but, uh, you know, how are you, how are you different? So, uh, yeah, Totsi, anything related to that part? I, I know that you have a lot to say related to, you know, to those kind of things. Well, that that's true because I, I will, 
Oh, I always uh, love to start with deep understanding of your customers, actually, because if you are able to fully and deeply understand your your customers, your target group, your potential potential decision decision makers, you will actually know how to help them. You will know how to serve things right. You will understand their point pains and if you decided to play the long game you will know how to present the right information and, and to the right people at the right time because you will be focused to actually add some value you will ungate your best content you will just give not uh, you will not try to sell at first date so I, I will always uh, I will always start with something like that in mind and after that I will see what's going on further and I will try to I don't know focus on few different target groups I will do additional segmentation for example I will chase different seniority levels so I will try to give uh, more personal content for this type of people who can actually, I don't know, give good feedback or they will they will actually make some business decision. I actually hope so. So let's uh, let's dive into then the next step. You uh, you started already talking about it. So the next step when we have defined, you know, uh, who we are as a company, mission, vision, we have the uh, the KPIs, we have we know the you know uh, USP. Uh, the next we know the competitors, of course. Uh, the next the next step would be to go and talk with the customers. So that would be the the, the next step, but to you know. Uh, to get to them, we need to first find them and approach them, right? So that's that's always uh, an interesting way to uh, to go and see how we can you know how we can approach them, because a lot of companies don't know how to do that part. You know, they don't know where to find those people, how to get them. I mean, my my point of view is that you need to know uh, what you're doing. Uh, from whom you are doing it, you know, before you got to the point where you have the service or the product. So you need to figure out those things. Then you do all those other things. And then you come up to the content. So uh, you need to do that firstly. You need to know ex exactly who you are talking with. And uh, with that, I have sort of uh, like a problem of what a lot of companies are doing when they're coming up with, you know, with ICPs, with different kind of people, you know, we're going to tag, we're going to target CFOs in the company that, you know, raised, I don't know, like 200 million ARR, let's say, uh, but they just focus on business things, on problems related to the business that your, uh, that your uh, product or service is solving. And, you know, that's looking at, you know, at a person as it is a half of a person. That's how I see it. You know, because we all have different things that moves us. And, you know, business and work is just part of them. And we need to go to dig a bit deeper than that. So is this person somebody who likes nature? Do they play basketball like our friend Marty Sanchez? Do they, you know, if it's uh, if it's a lady, do they like fashion? Do uh, do they play volleyball? Uh, you know, all kind of different different uh, different stuff can be involved over there. So, do they like wine or do they like beer? You know, just or, or still, both, or both. You know, just a simple thing. Do they have a family? It's it, are those people. You know, like we have three ICPs. Maybe we have something that's unique to all of them, that, that they're all singles, you know, or they all have a family or they all have a children. You know, we, uh, when we come up with ICPs and we analyze them deep enough, we need to go that deep to kind of find out um, 
what are some things that connects them outside of uh, that they have a problem which we can solve. So go uh, much deeper. And when you do that, we can find like two things that connects all of those, all of those people. So when we have those things, it's kind of, it gives us a little bit more freedom when we come up with creating the content, when we're creating the strategy, when we create the storyline, uh, you know, because uh, it's not only business. We can go and talk with them about different things and we can be creative outside, outside of the business because in tech, in finance, in, uh, you know, in compliance industry, you are just forbidden to talk about many things. It's, it can be coming from the management. Uh, it, can, uh, it can come that you cannot talk about what you do with the clients, uh, you know, or just finances. I mean, it's a sensitive, sensitive thing in a lot of, uh, a lot of situations. So uh, <clears throat> you need to come up with something that's outside of the business and come up with, uh, you know, with different topics that you can use. So you don't have like, ah, oh, but but we are boring. We're not interesting. You know, that's because of this. If we get to that situation when you are boring, when you are not interesting because you are focusing only on business, you're not getting personal. So, uh, yeah, Totsi, I know you, uh, you have been researching a lot about personas, about those kind of things. So what are some things that you are seeing? I know that... We are looking at a lot of brands that have invested uh, deeply enough, like, uh, you know, gaming industry is full of those kind of people. They're all, you know, like uh, both B2B and B2C, but you can see it's also tech, but there's a human note to it. And they talk about different layers uh, when they when they create content. Uh, from my like personal research, uh, uh, I somehow uh, saw like few interesting patterns because uh, most companies are somehow when they, they are doing uh, uh, like uh, their research to they want to create some buyer personas, uh, they are still thinking inside of the box. They are still th they are still thinking. Uh, uh, through the funnel. So my advice is like, hey, try to think a little bit outside of the box. Try to think a little bit outside of the panel because that's the that's the place where miracles are happening. Because if you are focused only and on only on uh, buyer personas who will fit inside your panel, you will probably miss the opportunity to go wider, to go deeper, to create some new demand, to create new strategic narrative, to actually healthy polarize some people based around your industry. And you will actually just lock yourself up uh, inside a boring uh, old fashioned panel everybody in the industry is using. I mean, that's a yes, you can do business that way and you can even be successful, but you will not create something outstanding. You will not create new category. You will not uh, launch something that will uh, move the market in next five, ten years. So you will just do uh, everything is everyone is doing in your industry and maybe you will be successful. Maybe you won't, but you will not creating something new, something outstanding. And probably that is the essential point try to think outside of the funnel try to think outside of the box because you will stop creating new content and see content strategy just as a starting point just as a top of the funnel range so you will start preparing different contents with different narratives in mind you will go a little bit further and uh, by default you will start actually educating people giving them additional value without uh, without anything in return so people will in time people will recognize that people will start seeing you your company as a thought leaders as a maybe new new category creators and when they have uh i don't know they, they need usually three to five content pieces to actually start thinking about solving their problems or uh, start seeing a new opportunity to save time to make more to make more money and uh, 
usually when you are giving more than asking, they will recognize you when the time is come uh, as a someone and they will approach to you actually and your sales team will say when they approach to you, these are the best leads. Yeah, when they come to you inbound, already educated and ready to buy. You can just, uh, you know, if you are smart, you can come up with a bigger deal. So, uh, yeah, but one thing I want to say, take a step back when we are talking about this and you elaborated uh, very well. Uh, we need to uh, to actually change things. And I think it's changing uh, when, it, when we are talking about KPIs. So what's changing? What's changing is that, uh, you know, uh, we don't, I don't think that marketing's job or the content's job should be just, you know, to, um, to create materials for sales so they can go and, and, and sell. You know, when we look at it like that, it's just coming up with the webinars. It's just, you know, uh, getting leads basically. Uh, but the way I see it, when you give enough information, when you educate, uh, when you create a brand, you will be recognized. And when your salespeople then go out and do the outreach, people will know uh, from which company they are. They will you they will sound seems familiar, and you know because of that, it will be much easier to get into the. Uh, conversations, it will be much easier to go and do something that people actually want to do. They want to get into the conversation with a brand that they know. So that's the way I see it. It's not like marketing is here just to create the content for the sales, but marketing is here to create awareness, to educate, inform, and prepare audience and create the brand differentiated from all the others. So when sales do the outreach, do their job, it's much easier to get into the conversations, to close the deals and to do anything. Basically, it's uh, another way to help sales, you know, not through, uh, through uh, getting them contacts, which in most cases, if you go to the, you know, if you go to the quantity, there's no quality. So uh, you just, you know, the old way, you will have more salespeople and that's how it goes, you know. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting perspective and interesting uh, things that we are doing. And also one thing, uh, Totsi, I think you can lead, lead the way with this. Uh, it is where our audience, our customers are spending time. Uh, for, first, I I really <laughs> want to take one step back. Hey, people, uh, when we are talking about leads, hey, let's define <laughs> these leads like and <laughs> be honest for once because what you are considering as leads are just contact information. So try not to ask us for marketing to provide you more and more and as Nemanja said our job is to actually warm up things with uh, future like prospects we want to educate them we want to prepare them and when they, when they come to you it will be like completely completely different these people will not be they will not feel uh, bad about uh, when you actually contact them they will be prepared they will know everything they need to know about your brand they will they will know everything about your services they will be prepared they will be warm so try to incorporate <laughs> these postulates in your in your future strategy and i don't know uh, when we are talking about like logical next further steps well i mean somehow try to go again to phase zero and always keep in mind like clear mission goals clear vision statements and when you put like everything like 
when you put like all pieces of puzzle together actually you will know what to do next it will be like completely natural a little bit different process you will you will have uh, less leads you will have like different activities from marketing department you will have like different activities from uh, in sales department you will actually talk with guys from customer success and uh, all of you together will try to create some uh, new revenue you will uh, actually talk with your real real customers you will understand their problems better it will not be problem with uh, attribution between uh, your teams because you will all share like attribution points because uh, some guy will came through blog articles and uh, i don't know you will talk with them further sales guys will will continue and they will end up with customer success guys you're all uh, sharing the future success and stop acting like i don't know three different departments we are all in this together and in my opinion uh, in since covid starts things are changing for good and it will stay like that we can expect Future, uh, future marketing, sales, customer success alignment uh, across the all industries. And I'm really happy about that. Yeah, uh, I think you went a little bit into, yeah, into yeah, yeah. another topic, but uh, I, I, I will go back and continue with uh, with actually coming up with the, with the strategy. So, uh, you know, we need to see where our customers are spending time. And uh, we will know that by talking with them. If we cannot talk with them, what we can do is we can listen to the podcast. Find the podcast that are doing interviews with your, uh, with your customers and with your audience. Um, you will see there's tons of podcasts, millions of them all around. You will find at least one. When you will see what they are sharing, how they are sharing, you know, they are Actually, now a lot of them, were, when people from you know from tech industry uh, or I don't know construction or something else, they are not talking about the industry at all. They are talking about their personal lives. That's so uh, yeah, I think the the good example is like um, Kyle Lacey uh, has a has a great podcast when he, he's interviewing CMOs and they are talking you know about different things about life, about the family, about, you know, a little bit about business, but mostly it's not about business. Uh, and it's great to see background of person, you know, and who they are in real life, what they want to share, you know, uh, those kind of things. And, uh, you know, when you talk with them or you listen to them, you will see where they are spending their time. Uh, if it's LinkedIn and why it's LinkedIn, if it's Twitter and why it's Twitter, maybe it's Instagram, I don't know, there are all kind of different uh, types inside the B2B industry. So there are Facebook groups, uh, there's Reddit, there's Quora, there are all kind of different small communities, like there's Revenue Genius, there's Revenue Collective, there are all kind of, you know, different smaller communities when people are actually spending their time because they're getting value out of it. And if you want to be where they are, like if you're going after, you know, engineers or gamers, Discord as well is a great place to find groups. So uh, you need to think about where they are and when they are spending their time. When you know where they are, you will know in which way they want to be communicated. Because like if I'm uh, on TikTok, that's how I want to be communicated. I don't want somebody going to the TikTok and talking about in a way that they talk on LinkedIn. Yeah. I want them to be and to communicate with me in the same way that they that you know other people are communicating. I'm I'm there on that platform because I like the way communication is being done. Also on LinkedIn, if I'm on LinkedIn, that's how I want to be uh, approached. If I'm on Twitter, well, yeah, then it's a different thing. If I'm on Facebook, then it's again completely different thing looking at so many different people some are using facebook for family and friends some are using groups some are using it as another you know company page or personal brand people are using platforms in a different way and you need to find the way they are using your customers are using the platforms 
And when you find out that, when you find out those things, when you know what they do outside of the business, what are their interests, what do they love, when you compare those things, when you find similarities, basically you will already have an idea about the content. You will have the, you will know what you want to achieve with what you are doing. You will know how you are different. You will know who you are going after. You will know where they are, and you will know the way they want to be communicated. Uh, that's like one hundred percent true. And you just need to see uh, where uh, where these uh, these people are like most active because they're all busy people they all need uh, additional time for their families for their personal activities to purchase your uh, their own dreams so if these people are spending some time and personal efforts on some platform be sure they love the platform and this is the place to approach them especially if they are like higher in some company they will really really appreciate their time so if i see cmo of some company i want to do some business uh spending time on twitter tweeting things about personal life or some personal rants hey this guy is actually loving this and i can expect similar guys spending his time on same platform doing some other similar things hey i will modify a little bit my content strategy and i will be sure these people are there for example on twitter for a reason so let's approach them a little bit different i will modify my content and distribution strategy and i will be ready to approach them and i will not do just out of the blue so i will try to prepare some interesting tweets to hang around communities they are already hanging around so i will try to engage on their tweets i will quote retweet something i will put additional comments uh giving additional value asking some thought-provoking questions and only after that i will approach so i'm actually modifying my content strategy personal personalizing a little bit and i'm actually doing a great job i'm there where my perfect audience is hanging around <laughs> actually simple as that like <laughs> i want to say congratulations because you say you are doing a great job so <laughs> I can just say congratulations. I want to add something, uh, you know, because uh, um, I got reminded uh, because, like, I saw uh, Mark from uh, from Metadata um, on a on a stream, and I want to say sometimes it's really hard to you know to find the right information about the customers, and in today's world there are companies just like metadata and some others that are providing those things and uh, sometimes you really need to go and use their services to kind of get the information you know because uh, that's why we I think you know we are in the AI age when we can use technology in the right way uh, and it's not easy to find uh, you know data and information about the customers if you are not if you cannot talk to them you know, it's a little bit hard. We said one thing is, you know, talking to them. If you can get to them, there is, you know, listening to the podcast and going out with those things. The third one is, you know, uh, making a cooperation with companies that are actually, uh, you know, gathering the data and making sense out of it to help you, you know, um, direct you in the right direction. So give you the right insights so all those things that we talked about, so you can just go and, and you know, do do uh, different things. And if you hear the dog, it's Totsi's dog, he might attack him any any moment right now. So don't be don't be scared if a big dog jumps into the into the <laughs> oh, I'm expecting delivery so for the and I'm expecting some hu huge huge uh, ring light, so uh, for the next episode, you will see me in much better light. So be prepared. Yeah. Uh, what I, what I wanted to say. So yeah, those are like kind of a few things that we can that you can uh, do to kind of get get the information. And um, 
No, just think. I mean, uh, I did. Uh, uh, I I took you back from the step one to the step uh, to the last step that we talked about. There are actually other steps, but they are more technical. So these things are, you know, where you're gathering information and uh, you start creating the strategy and the content when you have all the information and when you have, when you feel like you, you know the customers, when you feel like you had a coffee with them, you have a beer with them and you feel that you, you know what they, what you can talk about. You know, like you can jump in and talk about NBA because it's the playoffs right now, or you can talk about fishing or some other things. But uh, but those are kind of the things that are uh, that are important, and those are kind yeah, of the things that you can get. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I told you he'll come. <laughs> give me, give me. I uh, I announce. So be prepared. Next time you will see me in way better light. Yeah, we are uh, we are improving. Uh, I mean, I, I also think maybe I can come up with a with a video of how we. Um, how I started creating videos in my room in my hometown. That's really uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are actually all on Funky Marketing Facebook page. If somebody wants to go to those videos and uh, and check them out, but you know, you can see I just had a camera on my phone, which wasn't the best one, but I didn't care. I needed to produce the content, and that's it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dog is joining us. That's it. Uh, okay, so Totsi, uh, what what did we miss from this part related to the to the first steps in creating the content strategy? Ah, somehow I want to talk more about next steps. So, uh, and probably we will do in our next episode. So people be prepared. We will talk more about uh, like concrete content strategies, topic clusters, how to create pillar pages, how to distributed further why is all this like really really important how to do proper keyword research and uh, what we missed well i'm not sure i think we we covered we covered most of it uh, yeah. they there were no questions uh so i guess we're good to go, <laughs> we're, we're good to go. <laughs> mission accomplished yeah, but uh, but we talked about these things uh, a lot already on the podcast. If you yeah. go to the Funky Marketing Podcast or to the B2B Weekly Podcast uh, previous episodes, you will find a lot of talks about uh, related to the content. Uh, but now, you know, we, we have you prepared the basics and everything. And the next time we'll go more in how you can, you know, you can create the, the written content, how you can come up with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, different types of content and how you can actually structure it. Because now we gather the information, we know the information, now we need to come up with a structure. And this thing we're going to leave for the next time uh, and, you know, and talk more about, about that. Um, if we're lucky, we'll have an ebook ready until... until uh, the next week so also you will you will have a chance you know to dive deeper into it and uh you know see the not listen to it but you know open it on your screen and go step by step into into the the content strategy and set up everything for your company so or for your clients all depending what you what you're doing but um yeah I think uh, I think we we covered we covered most of it, and um, I don't know if we have been fun enough because it's funky marketing show. We need we need we need a couple of rents for the end. I think this is what what uh, dog what is missed. barking all the time. So I think it's funny. Dog dog is renting. Yeah, so yeah. we cover she, we covered that. She has she has opinion about everything. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what I have to say, uh, and this can be a little little rant, uh, and that is that most of the companies uh, just inside the content strategy, they don't include the distribution. They just create yeah, the that's content. True. That's true. 
and and that's it. Uh, not many companies have distribution figured out, and uh, you know they need to come up with that part for it to be effective. Build it, and they will come. Don't work. Uh, it actually never worked. Maybe it's work in the early days of Google if you are there. They are coming, or early days of any platform. But right now, uh, that's not going to work. The competition is extremely high. The demand for each service or the product is uh, extremely high. And to be able to differentiate yourself and to be able to be there, you need to uh, go halfway uh, to the customers, not wait for them to come to you. And I don't see many B2B companies doing it. They're just lazy. You know, they're just producing content, sharing even links, not even, you know, writing posts on LinkedIn, coming up on Twitter, you know, using different things. It's just being lazy. And, you know, I don't consider it as the old way of doing it. I just consider it lazy. And I just think, you know, a lot of them are, uh, you know, stuck in uh, some HubSpot playlist for, from 10 years ago uh, and still living in that age. Still waiting for somebody to find them on Google, still waiting for, you know, for things to happen by itself. And it's not happening. Those things are just not happening. And um, that's it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not happening for you if you don't figure out the distribution. That's <laughs> my ultimate message. It's not the old way. It's the wrong way. Don't do that. Yeah, the old way is the wrong way. That's it. <laughs> and I think I said too many times that's it in this episode, uh, which means that I'm thinking of so many different things. And it means that it's time for us to end the episode. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you Totsi, one, one question for the end. Uh, and it's oh. not the one that I'm asking you all the time. Now it's a little right, bit It's different. a new question. I knew it. Yeah. Was. Now it's a new one. And it is, which song would you recommend to the people to listen to one song? And that's it. Robbie Williams, Phil. <laughs> just I just event. want to feel real love. Without yeah. love, everything is like just boring. So the love is oh, yeah. like essential thing to motivate all of us that's that's good uh, i can even go and check you know and uh add the link and play a little bit feel but i don't want to <laughs> are, i think uh, let me let me add add to that uh to that suggestion go ahead and find rob williams singing feel live on a stadium and audience singing with him that's the right way to to feel the feel. <laughs>